Thanks for life. Yeah. Okay. Hello, hello everybody watching us live and also those who will be watching this video later on on YouTube. Uh, welcome to yet another session of uh, Pen at Prithvi, the fortnightly platform where we talk to writers from India and beyond, writing in English and other languages. And uh, tonight I'm joined by Vinita Agrawal in Studio Prithvi. Hello everyone. And we are here to celebrate the launch mm. of uh, the Bloomsbury book of great Indian love poems by Abhay K, editor, edited by Abhay K. Uh, so we are just waiting for Abhay to uh, join in using the Zoom link. But while we do that, let me quickly uh, read out the bios of our panelists for today. Uh, Ranjit Hoskote was about to join us, but uh, he has been detained due to some personal uh, issue. Um, so let me read out Abhay and Vinita's bios. Abhay K, was, who was born in Rajgir, Bihar in 1980, is a poet and diplomat, a member of the Indian Foreign Service of the 2003 batch. He currently serves as India's ambassador to the Republic of Madagascar. He has published eight collections of poetry, including Candling the Light, Remains, The Seduction of Delhi, and The Light and the Eight-Eyed Lord of Kathmandu. His edited anthologies include Capitals, 100 Great Indian Love Poems, 100 More Great Indian Poems, and Great Indian Love Poems, all published by Bloomsbury. He has translated Kalidasa's Meghadutam and Ritu Samhara from the original Sanskrit. Vinita Agrawal is the author of four books of poetry, Two Full Moons, Words Not Spoken, The Longest Pleasure, and The Silk of Hunger. She is an award-winning poet, editor, translator, and curator. Joint recipient of the Rabindranath Tagore Literary Prize 2018 and winner of the Gayatri Gamarsh Memorial Award for Literary Excellence, USC 2015. She is poetry editor with Usawa Literary Review. Her work has been widely published and anthologized. Her poem won a prize for the Moon Anthology uh, for the Anthology on the Moon Moon Anthology on the Moon mm. by Tallgrass Writers Guild, Chicago, 2017. More recently, her poem also won a special mention in the Hawker Prize for Best South Asian Poetry. She has contributed a monthly column on Asian poets and literary blog of the Ham Hamlin University, St. Paul, USA, in 2016-17. In September 2020, she edited an anthology on climate change titled "Open Your Eyes." She judged the RLFK Poetry <laughs> Contest International Prize in 2016 and co-judged the Asian Charles Poetry Contest on the other side in 2015. She has read at the F Filey Book Fair Merida, Mexico, Calagora Arts Festival, among others. She is on the advisory board of the Tagore Literary Prize. She has curated literary events for Penn Mumbai. She can be reached at www.vinitawords.com. Thank you, Suhit, but I must remember to give you a shorter bio next time. My apologies, <laughs> everyone. No, it's it's always it's good to know uh, the span <laughs> of someone's literary career. And uh, uh, admins are uh, has 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 our esteemed uh, panelists joined in yet? Okay. So so while we are actually waiting for uh, Abhay to join in, uh, he just he has just joined in. Okay, that's great. Mm. So we'll wait for his uh, yes. screen to appear. As you all know, he's based in Madagascar. So it's a long distance for him. <laughs> but of course... Hi, Abhay. Um, thank you so much for joining us. This is such an exciting occasion. Can you see and hear us, Abhay? We can't see Abhay's video and certainly cannot hear him either. Yeah. Okay. Abhay, could you could you please unmute yourself and uh, there you go. Hi, hi, Hello, Abhay. Abhay. Hello. Hi. Sorry, I think I'm a bit late, but uh, good afternoon. Yes, and, good afternoon, uh, Madagascar. It's evening in Mumbai. Very happy to see you, Abhay. Wonderful to see you, both of you. And uh, first of all, wish you a very happy new year. I likewise, think this is the likewise, first. Likewise, likewise. Thank you and happy first, new year to you. First literary event of the new year at Absolutely. Penn at Prithvi. 
right. absolutely and what better subject could we have for to begin the new year's literary calendar with than an anthology of great indian love poems which is of course the book we are going to launch today yes this is this is this fantastic book edited by abhay abhay would you like to hold up hold up the book so that we can ritually launch it okay. there you go here fantastic Wonderful. there it is lovely and uh, let me just say what a what an absolute pleasure it was to read this book uh it is uh, it it was an absolute delight it it covers the span of the millennia uh, to highlight a very very uh, eternal uh, wellspring of love so thank you once again for bringing this book to us most welcome and uh, i'm so happy and delighted that uh, prithvi theater uh, pen at prithvi theater is hosting this launch uh, the first launch of this book uh in uh, anywhere actually oh that's wonderful that's wonderful it's it's our privilege as well to 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 have this event uh, under the ages of pen at prithvi um so abhay uh, first of all now that uh, you know now that the book is uh, officially launched i really wanted to sound you out we, there are so many questions that we had uh, about the book but uh, first uh, can i ask you a simple question which is how and and it is a question that any would be writer or any would be poet would have which is that you have a very very uh, high profile sort of a, a, a demanding sort of a sort of a work job job how how exactly do you strike that right balance between uh, between poetry which is also a very demanding sort of energy energy demanding vocation and and your career which is also very demanding so i mean uh, i see you know poetry and diplom diplomacy complementing each other uh, it's a, you know there have been several uh, poet diplomats whom you whom you know quite well mm. uh, and they have managed to do that uh, for example octavio paz yeah. uh, who is one of my favorite uh, uh, poet diplomats from mexico he served as india's uh, mexico's ambassador to india in 70s and uh, also pablo neruda who had several ambassadorial assignments one was in france and uh, uh, but then there are a number of others uh, for example uh, george seferis from greece and uh, saint jean perse from france uh, so a number of them and uh, i mean there there are so many of them but these are some of the distinguished names i mean at one point of time sesla milos was also uh, a poet diplomat he was a cultural attache i think and uh, also gabriel gabriela mistral who was the first uh, latin american nobel laureate and a woman uh, she was also a poet diplomat for some time so i, I think you know what brings uh, uh, to answer your question um, is you know both poets and write i mean poets and diplomats they deal with words and uh, words words and words and uh, as uh, emily dickinson uh, says or said that tell it but tell it slant and i think that also <laughs> <laughs> something common within poetry and diplomacy both poets and diplomats have to be you know fundamentally have to be sensitive human beings because you can't be a good poet until you are sensitive and you can't be a good diplomat until you are sensitive to both sides because you are not only just representing your own country but also you have to uh, consider the interests of the host country where you are working so that there is a common meeting point so i think some of these i mean also the the, the thing which combine which which brings poetry and diplomacy together is brevity Uh, how do you say things in less amount of words so i think uh, brevity uh, you know ambiguity which is tell it but tell it slant tell it through metaphors and uh, sensitivity i mean these are some of the common and i mean as uh, you know i was reading an interview by rita dow you know us poet laureate and she said that you know one thing which 
poets and diplomats, you know, uh, have to be careful that, you know, choose your words very carefully. Uh, so uh, I think, you know, and also, I mean, serving as a, uh, I mean, I mean, my work as a diplomat is complemented by my work as a poet, because, you know, uh, by poetry, it's easier to connect with people, uh, whether in Kathmandu or wherever I have served, I still have friends in those capitals, either in Moscow or in St. Petersburg or in Kathmandu or in Brasilia. People still write to me. And it's because of poetry, because poetry leaves deeper connections. You know, it has deeper impact on the... Uh, on, and, and that way, I mean, uh, it also helps your work as a diplomat, because what is the job of a diplomat? It is to connect with people. It is to connect with the important people uh, in the capital cities, and it, it makes your job easier. You don't look uh, as, you know, as, I mean, people are like, uh, uh, they, they let their guard down if it comes to poetry, you know, they're not as, <laughs> as poetry. a loop, as a diplomat. Poetry is an ambassador so, in its own right, as you were yes. So, so I think that being a poet has, you know, helped me as a diplomat. And also being a diplomat has helped me as a poet because then you know i can travel across the world and can write about different things i mean I, there's no dearth of subjects for me to write about uh, always something so, so i think that's that's how i mean i i manage absolutely absolutely and which which brings us also in a very neat way to to the subject of this particular remarkable book which is that of love poetry uh, and we were very, very uh, interested to know how this, how this, how the inception or the idea for this book came about in your mind, and uh, what you know, when did it begin to seem like a distinct possibility that you should have an anthology of uh, great Indian love poems? So, my hello to Ranjit. Is he joining us, or is so, he there? So, yes, I mean, we, uh, unfortunately, Ranjit was called away because of a family emergency. Okay, okay, I see. So okay, okay. We just, uh, so it's unfortunate, uh, but uh, he sends his great regards and he also apologies. He also sends his apologies to you uh, because he cannot make it today. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear about that. Uh, so coming back to your question of uh, when did this happen? So before editing uh, Great Indian uh, Love Poems, I have edited another anthology called Great yeah. Indian Poems. And, uh, you know, the need for uh, the Great Indian Poems come, I mean, you know, it came uh, from this desire to read poetry, Indian poetry from various Indian languages. Uh, I was very fascinated uh, with poetry from, for example, poetry in translations. Uh, so I, I was curious uh, that how how is how poetry in Telugu, for example, you know, reads like, or how is it in Tamil? I mean, not only contemporary poetry, but also poetry through centuries, because Indian poetry goes way back to Rig Veda, you know, so uh, in hymns and uh, and so on. So, uh, so I was fascinated. I was curious, and then I also felt this this thing that you know the focus of uh, you know of contemporary poetry in India was becoming poets rather than poems. So I wanted to shift, you know, bring back the focus to poems because, you know, you uh, you remember at the end of the day, the poems, you know, you don't, you, you may forget who wrote that poem, but then those images and those lines stay with you. So I think it's the poem which is, which is important, you know, more important than who writes them, you know. So, Absolutely. So this, so during this period, you know, during uh, uh, editing this uh, first hundred great Indian poems, uh, and then hundred more great Indian poems, I realized that many of these great Indian poems, I mean, great for me, uh, were actually love poems. You know, many of them. So then I thought, why not to uh, put an anthology of exclusive anthology of great Indian love poems? Itself. And uh, it was a very rewarding experience. It set me on the path of uh, reading uh, Meghdoot uh, uh, and 
uh, of Kalidas and also Ritu Samhar. And also uh, it, uh, uh, it uh, you know, Kama Sutra and so many, I mean, original works, you know, and uh, and translate some of, you know, some of these. I, I did, I ended up translating whole Meg Dut and Ritu Samhar in this process, which, which are going to be other, you know, next few books, you know, coming in. That's wonderful. I think uh, Vinita had the question uh, yes, Abhay, I have been very intrigued by your Sanskrit translations and the fact that, you know, this anthology uh, has a spread of poetry from Dharmakriti, Vidya, Kalidas and so many other Sanskrit poets. So I was wondering whether you did all the translations yourself. I did look at the translation note at the end of the book and I believe there were a few people involved with the Sanskrit translations. So first of all, tell us, are you very fluent in Sanskrit? Are you a Sanskritist? And do you do translations all by yourself? And what is the process of translating from Sanskrit like for you? So, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I was fortunate to have a very good Sanskrit teacher in school days. Uh, and, you know, my love for Sanskrit has been there since school time. And, uh, uh, you know, so many, so many slokas and uh, so many uh, I mean, beautiful, uh, these poems, you know, I remember from those days. And, uh, uh, and I mean, Sanskrit is not very difficult, you know, it's not a very difficult language if you pay attention to it, because it's very rational, actually. So, uh, so, so I know Sanskrit, you know, I mean, I, I learned it. And, uh, uh, and during this time, you know, when there was a lot of plenty of time, during the COVID lockdown, I had the opportunity to go back to the originals, you know, and uh, and read those and uh, translate translate these poems. So, uh, I mean, there are in this anthology most of the Sanskrit translations are by me, but also there are other translators. For example, A A and D Huxer, who is a very well known translator, and also a few translations by others. Uh, uh, in Sanskrit and other languages, but uh, but the process is like you know I mean uh, it's very uh, I mean uh, it's as as it is from Hindi you know or from so you start uh, with the you know take a look uh, and then uh, you get a rough idea that what it is going to say and then you know I think half of the art of translation is to bring that into contemporary language exactly. because. Because, you know, I mean, uh, it's a, people say that, you know, everything needs to be translated uh, every 20 years, you know. Yeah. Uh, so basically one generation. So even, for example, some, uh, Shakespeare is translated today from his English into contemporary English. Yeah. You know? uh, so, so I think, you know, the, the, once you get the idea, the, uh, you understood, you, you get what exactly it is. I mean, it's trying to say and then you have to translate that idea poetically into the contemporary English. And I think uh, uh, so. So, so I read, uh, uh, you know, also the translations done by other people, like you know, Kalidasa's uh, Megdut, for example, has over hundred editions of translations. You know, all recorded in the Library of Congress catalog. Uh -huh. And uh, but I read two, three uh, of the translation. Translations done by others as well. I mean, and these translations done over 200 years uh, yeah. from 1800 yeah. onwards. So, uh, so I mean, you know, wherever you have confusion, you can always look at or ask somebody, you know, ask an expert, uh, you know, what does it exactly mean? But then, you know, that may not be very poetic. So you have to do that job to, you know. Put it poetically, and I think most of the translation which have been done earlier are not by poets. For example, A. N. D. Huxer himself is not a poet. You know, okay. Uh, okay. he's a translator. You know, and uh, even other translators were civil servants or scholars. They were not poets. So this translation which I have done of Megdut is poetic in the sense that it it sort of brings in poetic sensibilities of uh, of Kalidas. So I think but, it. Uh, but also curious about sourcing these texts. Do you have some of these texts with you personally in your collection or 
uh, would you recommend some of these names the the actual which presses do they come belong to and how can other people also source these original texts yeah they, they i mean i have like sahitya academies uh, has published uh, you know a volume on i think three volumes on kalidas so i have these volumes uh, collected works of kalidas and uh, then also uh, uh, the older texts are available online for example uh, the translations which have been done uh, in 1800 and 1900 you know uh, they are available as free i mean you can download these even the whole text sanskrit uh, text is available online you can you know uh, mm. so i mean uh, i had a few of these books but uh, uh, also i took advantage of you know uh, the online archives uh, if you look google search make do you will find them actually oh. so so this is a very good point uh, to uh, request you if we could actually have you read one of these poems that you translated from the sanskrit so this is selection from rigved uh i think the very first you know i mean i was very i was enchanted to find this you know and i found this uh, i mean uh, so here there are three characters indrani indra and uh, brishakapi you know so uh, brishakapi is uh, is the third one so indrani on herself no woman would have rounder hips than me or would be more skilled in the art of love making or pressing tighter or thrusting her thighs higher indra the greatest of all brishakapi to indrani o easy woman it will be as it must be my hips my thighs my head are excited indra the greatest of all indra to indrani o beauty with slender arms and graceful fingers with luxuriant hair and wide hips what will you hurt our brishakapi indra the greatest of all and the final one is indrani to indra mighty is not the one whose penis hangs between his legs but the one for whom the furry organ opens as it inflates and sets to work indra the greatest of all pretty amazing <laughs> yeah absolutely it's, yeah. it's 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 very uh, dialogic but it's also extremely outspoken it is extremely graphic in its depictions of uh, right. of, of 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 the physical uh, organs of love and of the emotions that lie behind it thank you so much for reading it uh, also i wanted to ask you a question about you know that uh, you mentioned a little uh, earlier that there is so much material that one can you know ranging from ancient times to of course contemporary times when there is absolutely a lot of work going on in indian poetry in english particularly and also in the various in other indian languages uh, how did you decide when you were conceptualizing this anthology that you wanted something to be uh, how did you decide what to include and what to leave out in that sense so i wanted to create uh, you know uh, a mood in the sense that i wanted to create an ambience of love uh, and all kinds of love uh, here uh, there is a poem by sarojini naidu called raksha bandhan right which is which uh, has aspects of brother sister love here uh, there are poems by uh, rabindranath tagore uh, you know which talks about one day in a rainy one rainy day you know it's a monsoon one day, monsoon season so uh, i mean here are poems by muddu palani for example you know in praise of uh, uh, krishna and uh, uh, dharmakirti you know so kafi azmi i mean it sort of uh, you know the things i didn't want to include was you know uh the violent part you know in the sense that violence in the terms of i mean if there is blood somewhere or you know and the, the extreme extreme because um 
I mean, there's also that form of love, you know, where, so, uh, so I wanted to keep it uh, um, uh, in a way which, uh, which sort of is not extreme in any, in any way. And uh, which sort of, you know, which is reflected in the gentle cover it has, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so it creates this sense of warmth rather than, you know, uh, hatred. Because there's also, I mean, love, love is very, love has diverse sides. And there are also, you know, sides where people are very unhappy in love and it leads to various consequences. So I wanted to keep those things out. I mean, they are sure, I mean, they deserve their own anthologies. So I wanted to keep this as sort of, you know, where people can return to it and uh, find uh, this, uh, you know, a poem like Banalata Sain or yeah. um, At Polin by Menka Shabdashani or, mm. you know, uh, uh, Vinita herself has, I mean, I have, I think, three of her poems because yeah. they're fantastic. I mean, I love them. And uh, uh, um, it's an exception because most of the people have just one poem, you know, even, you know. I'm honored. Uh, uh, Thank you. Tishani has, you know, Tishani Doshi, she's got also three poems. Right. So, uh, but, but these are like, uh, you know, great poems. And uh, uh, one of my discovery was actually Pratish Nandi because he, mm -hmm. his poem, uh, I found fascinating and I have included, you know, the whole series of them. Which is uh, uh, which is from tonight? This savage right mm. uh, among the contemporary poets. So uh, Amir Khushro, I mean, it sort of creates a mood, you know. Yeah. So in fact, it is wonderful that you mentioned Vinita's poems because I am just going to invite her to read them out if possible. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. I'd love to. So I have three poems, as Abhay mentioned, and they're all really short poems. So somehow I was in the frame of mind to write really very, very short love poems. So one of them is titled Love. At night it aches like a door left ajar in the wings. The naked floor rising to comfort its hinges. The oscillation fanning the parlor of lost presence. Yeah. Thank you. There's another poem that I have here, which is titled Formless. Where are you in this nivious haze? Where are you? I feel you on my lips like a call. I feel you on my fingertips like braille. I feel you like a shudder in the winds. Take me with you as you flow, wherever you go. My form shattered the day you looked at me. I have nothing to lose now. Would you like me to read? Yes, this please, time? please. Okay. This one is titled A Lover Far Away. My love is in the clinging rivulets of rain at the window. It comes a long way gathered in the arms of many clouds, lifted from many oceans, but rests like a thirst, quenching trickle against your lips. I have heard that thirst is sweet on the lips of a lover far away. Wow. You know, uh, while we are at it, I would like to read Ranjit's poem because he is not oh, here. No. Yes, Please yes. Do. Please do. Uh, I think. Uh, you know, I would have loved to, you know, he, he could have been, yes. but it's a beautiful poem called Rain. Yes. Uh, we are nothing but water, you said, turning back from where the sun set sail this evening. The wind rushed through us, reporting to nights we walk. It's raining daggers. I'll wake up drenched, skin bruised, eyes stung by the flute that keeps the oblong hours of sleep. Come back, trace me to my deep, hiding place behind rag nerve and stupored vein. There's no refrain, but this to this song of first lines 
the one line running over my love my love is as real as tonight's rain wow beautiful it is beautiful yeah. yes so uh, in fact now that we go uh, uh, now that we covered a significant swathe of ground really from the rigveda which is in india's prehistory to 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 contemporary love poems uh, i just wanted to ask you uh, while you were compiling these poems you know you 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 must have gone through an extensive process of long listing and short listing and uh, it is said that you know love is an eternal kind of a thing but but have you seen any sort of common ground shall we say in the way that love poems used to be written and the way that they are written and do you think that there is uh, anything new that one can say about this very very old and eternal subject that is after divinity probably the most uh, written about subject in poetry at least see love is eternal it means uh, it means that you know it was it is and it will be uh, as long as human beings or not only human beings because love is not only a human being subject but also you know it's a create is the subject for whole creation because even animals and plants you know they show love and affection and uh, i was just watching yesterday a video of a bull you know who was running after this cow which was taken away you know and then finally they saw this video which went viral and they reunited the bull and the cow yeah. so uh, but but i mean uh, so so there is a continuity you know if you can see rigveda you know this whole sense of you know i mean this whole whole, whole uh, you know sense sensuality this uh, you know it's it's eternal in the sense that we are just mere forms you know like for example life itself so uh, because love is the way is the medium for life to propagate itself and uh, 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 and love you know uh, without love i don't think life is possible so uh, so it's a uh, uh, kabir says pothi padi padi jag moha pandit bhaya ne koi dhai aakhar prem ka padhe so pandit hoy wow. so i think it's it's that you know if we can so so love over the i mean that emotion hasn't changed i mean it remains the same and that's why poetry is essential uh, and that's why probably you know if i think that kalidas is such a contemporary poet uh, because he 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 has this unique genius to combine uh, uh, combine nature and sensuality uh, and create an eco poetry of uh, uh, for ages so nice. you know so so i think uh, uh, you heard the rigved poem and you heard vinita's poem so i want to ask you this question what was the difference you know <laughs> and uh... <laughs> that's a lovely question it's a lovely question and uh... i mean uh, apart uh, you i think you're absolutely right that in that that the eternal wellspring from which these sentiments come you know it is it is precisely that it is eternal one can look at matters of craft and say okay the craft is different or the uh, or the way that something is said slant or the way that something is said elliptically or alluded to maybe that is different but but it really springs from the same root i think these are all just differently shaped leaves of the same tree probably but uh, uh so 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 uh, another thing that uh, strikes me about these poems is that of course uh, they must have taken a long uh, you said that you wanted to create a mood you know a sort of a, a sort of a lingering sort of a mood for this anthology so do you think that the, that uh, there is scope for a part 2 of this anthology are you Uh, are you are you thinking along those lines as such <laughs> no not really because you know I, i have done i think enough anthologies now <laughs> you know i have edited <laughs> quite a number of them but uh, but uh, you know but i'm doing a poem called monsoon you know which uh, which is uh, which is sort of uh, you know a, a which is a love poem and uh, uh, it uh, it connects uh, it's sort of it's an inspiration from meghdoot 
you know so i <laughs> so i'm working on that at this moment and uh, uh, it's uh, it's fascinating how is it coming up and it's a long poem you know of uh, over 100 stanzas so uh, so i think that's uh, that's sort of a continuity i mean uh, and it would not have been possible if i would not have translated medu once i have done that now i have my own language to to sort of uh, describe love uh, you know and uh, and combine it with uh, you know different geographies uh, so i mean this is how things happen you know one thing gives you, leads you to another Nice. And uh, uh, and so on, but uh, I think these are enough, you know, <laughs> enough number of poems you know, <laughs> to to last for some time, and Absolutely. maybe later, you know, I'll see after a few years if I, you know, all the things I do is from an internal need, you know. Mm -hmm. First of all, it, there should be an urge within me to, you know, curiosity within me to know something, or so so. So all the books I write or, you know, anthologies I edit, you know, they are quests, quests to know more. <laughs> That's a lovely way of saying it, really, which which nicely sets up my next question, which is how has this process of uh, anthologizing love poems nourished you or transformed you or helped you in some way to reach a new place in your own poetry? Like you said, this helped you write, you, you're writing on a poem on the monsoon based on you know which uh, which would not have been possible without kalidasa's uh, right. classic poem uh, so how has it trans is this is, has it been a transformative process has it been a, a process of change? completely yes completely because even as a reader it has transformed me um, because 99 percent of poetry is reading poetry and one percent is writing you know so uh, so it i mean it's sort of so I have enough like Amrit now, you know, Amrit in the sense that, <laughs> so it helps me to, you know, I mean, uh, to very quickly find out, you know, what I want to read and what I don't want to read, you know, first of all, that, you know, so I've become sort of selective that this is what moves me. So I'm going to read this. And second, that, uh, uh, that it helps, it has helped me to become a better writer because, uh, uh, by reading so much and then, you know, editing is, you know, a very careful reading because you can't edit anything or can't compile anything until you read them again and again and again and see that, you know, I mean, as an editor, you have to go through the same text 10 times so that there's not a comma missing or a space here and there left, you know, mm -hmm. it's very, it's very tedious job. So, uh, so that makes you a very uh, attentive and careful reader. I think this ability also helps you to uh, sort of uh, and uh, you know as a develop your own uh, fuse the metaphors and uh, when you when you see the context I mean everything is derivative you know all literature is derivative in the sense that uh, I mean we always read some people and then you know think of our own things so. Uh, so, so these poems, of course, I mean, reading and editing these poems helps has helped me to to create something of my own. Uh, but of course, inspired, you know, from them. For example, when I read a poem of uh, Eliot uh, called uh, "Love Poem of uh, uh, Love Song of Alfred of Prufrock. Prufrock. Yeah, love song. Sorry, love song of uh, Alfred J. Prufrock. You know, and uh, that was that was I think you know I read this poem four years ago. And, you know, this poem sort of put me on the track to write a poem called Proof Rock at the Carnival in Rio. And, uh, you know, and and this poem is, I mean, it's hugely interesting poem, you know, which even I was surprised at how can it come up like this. And, uh, and it's one of, uh, I mean, the central poems of my latest poetry collection, The Alphabets of Latin America. And uh, it was published in Poetry Salzburg. And I mean, it, it was fascinating how, you know, one, somebody's work. Uh, and there, you know, I always say this, I, I keep thinking that, you know, we might, you know, poets don't need books, you know, the whole thick books. Poem, poets need just one good poem, which, which people can remember or which can last. And, you know, I mean, 
when when i think of somebody i can i mean when i think of proof rock uh, uh, ten uh, sorry elliot i always think of proof rock you know mm. uh, or when i think of uh, neruda i think of his love poems you know uh, so so there are these poems which you you remember poets by their one or two poems you know and then rest of the book is sort of a you know addition you know we can have like you know 10 books of poetry or 20 books of poetry but i mean if we can have one more memorable poem for example night of the scorpion by misty mm. uh, as kyle you know who used to head pen i think you know long time yes, ago yes yes absolutely so, absolutely yeah, and speaking yeah. of so i sorry sorry please continue so so i was saying that you know poets we should not be in a rush to have our poetry collections but focus on doing one you know great poem you know one perfect poem which could be which could become everything it's more than books and that's why you know i mean poets don't need publishers you know you can get one poem published anywhere mm. you don't have to run after you know publishers let them run after you very true very true that's that's a wonderfully inspiring thing to say abhay thank you so much and while you are on the subject of your writing may i request you to read out one of your poems that 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 you, that that finds a place in the anthology when well, you know that's always a tricky thing to put one's own poem in the anthology you know it's a very hard thing to do and most of the editors face this problem recently when gulzar came out with his you know book uh, uh, 365 i mean po- a poem yeah. a day you know yeah and uh, uh, and uh, you know uh, he uh, it took him 8 years to do that you know and he was very hesitant to put his own poem you know <laughs> so so editors they put his poem as the 366th poem you know mera kuch samal you know a translation <laughs> but this is always a very you know a moral and uh, you know a hard thing to do to put your own poem in an anthology but then you think that you are also a poet so you know why not you know if you are putting others <laughs> so you give in to the temptation So here is uh, a poem called Moon Rising, you know, and uh, it has it it's it it's it's actually I wrote this poem in Brasilia in you know when there was moon rising, moon rising over the horizon, a longing rising in my heart to see the moon, and you. Through the night. Without blinking. to the to follow the moon and your body until it sets and you rise ba oh, so uh, so this is this is a short poem you know but i mean it, it's just that uh, i couldn't find any other better love poem i have written so <laughs> I just put it one of it. Yes. Thank you. Do you, you. have any favorites in the book that you would like to share with us? Any of your favorite poems from the book? Which again is a tricky question. <laughs> It's a tricky question. But of course, you know, the Kalidasa's uh, you know poem, I mean, Kalidasa is one of my favorite uh, poets and uh, here is the description of Uma's love making. uh from kumar sambhava this this also i have translated but this is this poem is also in the previous anthology the 100 great indian poems shiva taught her how to make love in their bed parvati offered him back herself full of grace of a young woman like a present one gives to one's guru she trembled in pain as her bitten lower lip was released slowly Parvati took a deep breath of cool air coming from the crescent moon in Shiva's hair while kissing her long hair dust fell into Shiva's third eye Parvati blew it off with her perfumed breath fragrant as smell of a blossoming lotus so the lord of the beasts whose mount is Nandi the bull gratifying kama the god of love by immersing himself in the pleasures of senses lived for a month with uma in the mountain king's palace 
Thank you. Oh, utterly gorgeous. Absolutely, absolutely. And the sheer originality and imaginative strength of those images, you know, dust falling into the third eye and her glimpsing the moon through in his in his in his locks of hair. It's it's absolutely vivid. <coughs> Excuse me. It's absolutely vivid and it's it's a, it's a way of making that myth yours by right. supplying these images. Right. Um, yes, Ritu Samhar is one of my favorite. It has become one of my favorite, uh, you know, um, books uh, because Ritu Samhar is pure eco poetry and love poetry, you know, and combination of these two. So, uh, in summer, for example, uh, uh, you know, uh, I haven't come across description, poetic description, in which you know, uh, animals become uh, kind to each other. For example. Uh, the the peacock does not uh, hurt the serpent. Serpent does not eat the frog, all because uh, because because they know that they're all under this scorching summer heat. Mm. And uh, uh, so, uh, I mean, the kind of empathy Kalidas brings in Ritu Samhar is just uh, extraordinary. I would recommend that everybody should should read that. I was watching this movie Asar ke Asada ka ek din, you know, by Mohan uh, Rakesh, and uh, uh, which is based on Kalidas' life. And uh, this, uh, you know, he was he wrote Ritu Samhar and became famous. And then he went to uh, to he was invited by the king Vikramaditya to the court in Ujjain. And uh, then, you know, uh, the, uh, uh, he returns. I mean, he does not return back to the village where he was in love with this. This woman, you know, and he so Kalidas was he became a uh, he became a, he married the princess I think and he became uh, an official or you know a high ranking uh, maybe a governor to Saurashtra or Kashmir so um, uh, so so you know and uh, so there was this again this thing you know how did he manage the poetry and you know his <laughs> his office work you know <laughs> so <laughs> so i think that's he's another example of <laughs> absolutely absolutely uh, one of the greatest possibly so we are almost uh, 10 minutes left we have 10 minutes left uh, may i ask the admins if there are any questions from the audience or I'd also like to request the audience that if you have any questions, uh, please type them in the chat box so that our esteemed panelist can address them. But until then, uh, you know, it's I can I can barely resist the temptation to request that you read another poem that that you really like that really struck please a chord do. with you from the collection. Please do from the anthology. Sorry, this is a poem called "Move on Her Lips" by Bhutu Palani. Translated from Telugu by Velchuru Narayan Rao. Move on her lips, the tip of your tongue. Do not scare her by biting hard. Place on her cheeks a gentle kiss. Do not scratch her with your sharp nails. Hold her nipple with your fingertips. Do not scare her by squeezing it tight. Make love gradually. Do not scare her by being aggressive. I'm a fool to tell you all these. When you meet her and weighs your war of love, would you care to recall my do's and don'ts, honey? Wow. <laughs> but it's also for the, I mean, I think lots of young people, because uh, I mean, particularly young men, you know, who are very aggressive with women, you know, whether it is Eve teasing or, I mean, this is our heritage, you know, I mean, whatever is in this book is India's great heritage of, you know, love. I mean, uh, uh, Batsyayana was, you know, he was from Patliputra, you know, in ancient Patna, Bihar. And, uh, uh, and I mean, we are a civilization which produced a whole treatise on love making. And uh, so, uh, I think you know uh, we should look if we are looking at modern modernism or you know looking at advancement in civilization we only have to go back to our roots 
Mm. We don't have to look or copy from the West or from anywhere else, you know, because there is so much within India and in Indian texts. So, yes. uh, so I mean, and not only I mean Kamasutra, but look at Madhupalani or look at you know mm. anybody. For example, uh, here is a poem by Arundhati Shoramanyam called "Shorthand." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the body speaks shorthand, coded yet blazingly simple. To hold each other all night is all we want. And still we sit apart, tell stories, not trusting only art that matters right now. Wow. Stenography. Wow, wow, wow. Beautiful. <laughs> so, <laughs> There's another poem, Abhay, on page 180. Yeah. Page 180. Turning and tossing in the bed which is yeah. on a very unique theme of love. It's about a lover's quarrel and, you know, right. maybe a fight. Please go whatever. ahead. You can read it. I would, I would love like to read this poem. I found it extremely beautiful and sweet. Very, very sweet. This poem has also been translated from the Sanskrit by Abhay. It's called Turning and Tossing in the Bed. Turning and tossing restlessly in, in the bed each suffering without uttering a word, ready to patch up secretly, but scared of losing face. Then their furtive glances meet accidentally. There is a sudden spontaneous laugh and the row breaks in an instantaneous tight hug or the row breaks in an instantaneous tight hug. Wow. Which is such an unusual poem. I really, really Absolutely. like it. <laughs> this is from Amaru, Sut Amaru Sataka, you know, by yes. Amaru. Yes. This is so. So see, I mean, you were asking that how has the emotions changed? Have the emotions changed over the year? No, they remain the same. Today, the couples, you know, the husband and wife, they have a fight and they don't know how to make. So these are the art of, you know, how to. How to uh, patch up, up, how to... Yeah, the making yeah. up. Yeah. Exactly. And there where, you know, is the whole, I mean, I think our civilization, as they say, charity begins at home, mm -hmm. you know, love begins at home. And this is, this is where, you know, how the world survives. Uh, and these are the techniques for survival, you know, <laughs> rather than killing each other, <laughs> you know, <laughs> better to make up. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. And and uh, in an increasingly polarized world riven across various axes, a book like right. this, uh, which is on that theme of love, uh, is all the more welcome addition to any, any bookshelf. Um, so this is, of course, the Bloomsbury Book of Great Indian Love Poems, edited by Abhay K. Are there any questions? Okay, so there seems to be no questions. So why don't we uh, ring the session out with perhaps one last poem? This is advice from Vatsyayana to uh, lovers on kissing, you know, uh, because Indian film, movies are now uh, telling people, you know, they're showing, uh, I think now, you know, kisses openly. So here is, you know, advice on kissing. Among the lovers, whatever is done by the one, the same should be done in return. If a woman kisses him, he should kiss her in turn. If she strokes him, he should stroke her too in return. I think we should leave, <laughs> leave after this. <laughs> yes, of course. Of course. Uh, or maybe, maybe this one. Uh, maybe this one by Kalidas again, craving yeah. sweet nectar. <clears throat> craving sweet nectar, you kissed a freshly bloomed mango bud once. <laughs> Could you forget her bee, burying yourself in a lotus? No. <laughs> Very suggestive, but so beautifully said. Absolutely, absolutely so. So, and with that, we are almost at the end. In fact, we are at the uh, end of the uh, session but uh, so this was the great indian the bluesbury book of great indian love poems by abhay k it's available is it available on amazon is it available online yes it's available on, on amazon and in book, all the bookshops of mumbai Wonderful. Uh, 
you know so i i would recommend it. everybody <laughs> must have a copy of this book it's, it's a uniting force in a absolutely way. absolutely absolutely so uh, yeah, I, okay. yeah please please i wish to take this opportunity to thank uh, both of you suhit for taking the pain to do this on 2nd of january very beginning of the year <laughs> and uh, it was absolutely a delight been, really and vinita for uh, for you know being such a gracious host My and uh, and guest as well and for your poems thank you for this very lovely and memorable uh, session today with uh, pain at prithvi and my so much, uh, namaste to ranjit as well and you know to to all the audience who joined us today thank you please thank do read so the much. book yes. yes please do read the book go get your copy it's beautiful absolutely so please uh, to the audience i would like to say uh, we are a fortnightly platform we uh, talk to writers from india and beyond writing in english and other languages and uh, please follow us on instagram so that you know what our upcoming events are going to be uh, we are also active on twitter and we upload all our sessions on youtube so uh, we will also provide the links to those uh, please scan our social media for those links so uh, thank you so much abhay and uh, that's it for uh, that's it for tonight bye bye everybody and bye. have a happy new year happy new year to thank everybody. you Thank you happy new year to all thank you bye